So the doctor is in and the topic today is suspicious mammograms and what to do if you're called back for additional testing. Although it's unsettling, of course, if you get news like this, but experts say the first thing you should do is not panic. And joining us today to talk about what happens if you need additional diagnostic tests is none other than Dr. Scott Ackerman, one of the First Coast's leading oncologists. He joins us every Friday. Thank you, um, so Casey. thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. So. Um, you know, women go in for their routine mammograms, and I've had friends uh, who have told me that they have been called back for additional tests, and it, it's very scary and very unnerving. Um, but is this a common thing? Because I've heard it from quite a few friends. Well, yes, Casey, it is very scary uh, for women to hear that they need additional tests. Um, a lot of women go in for mammograms, and they get a call uh, a day or two later saying, hello, Mrs. Smith, we need you to come back for some additional imaging, additional tests. And the truth is about 10 to 15 percent of mammograms, of women who get mammograms are called back uh, for additional imaging, additional testing. And there's lots of reasons that that can be done. Don't, uh, don't overreact and get very scared about it that you think you have cancer, but you should be, <clears throat> you should take it seriously and, and be conscientious to make sure you do it because it happens at there's both ends of the spectrum. There's women that decompensate, and there's also women that blow it off and don't even do it, but you really need to take it seriously. And the reason that we call women back in for additional imaging, it could be lots of things. It's not necessarily that we think there's a tumor there. It could be that the uh, mammogram was overexposed or was underexposed. Perhaps when the uh, technician took the pictures of the breast, um, that we didn't get the whole breast in the image, we're missing some breast tissue. Sometimes there's a little funny fold in the breast when it gets put between the paddles of the mammogram unit and that fold will create an artifact on the image. And so those are all sorts of reasons we bring women back in for additional testing. It's more common in women who are having their first mammogram. So it's a great way to start off your, you know, when you recommend mammograms on an annual basis, mm -hmm. so when you get your first mammogram, it's a great way to start off to come back in again for another uh, set of imaging. So it's real scary for those women because it's their, their first mammogram, but yeah. it happens more often in those women who are getting their first mammogram. Okay, so when someone says we see something suspicious on a mammogram, what is that word? Because uh, suspicious, you know, that gives me a little bit of anxiety. Sure, you know? sure, it should. Um, because what we're looking for is suspicious. We're looking for something that's suspicious for cancer. We're, we're, we're trying to identify cancer early before it's clinically apparent, before you can feel it. Uh, because if we diagnose cancer before you can feel it, we can cure it. Our cure rate for cancers that are non-palpable, that haven't spread, is well over 90%. So we want, the whole, that's the whole point behind mammograms, is, 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 is finding these suspicious things and catching them early. So what are we looking for? Yeah. So what, what is suspicious? Suspicious is calcifications. You've, a lot of people have heard about looking for calcifications, and we look at calcifications that are large. We call them macro calcifications, or small little baby ones that we can barely see. Those are micro calcifications. And they're more often associated with cancer, the micro calcifications, as opposed to macro. We're also looking at masses in the breast. Those could be suspicious. They could represent a cyst, just a benign cyst, or a benign fibroadenoma. You've heard of women having mm -hmm. fibrocystic disease. These things we see on mammograms as well. So when we have to do additional tests, what kind of additional tests will be performed? Are they more <clears throat> mammograms? or? So when, you, when you're brought back in for additional imaging, the first thing that's done is additional mammogram. A uh, mammogram again, what we call a diagnostic mammogram, where the radiologist is there and he or she ex may examine the breast, look at the images immediately, and when they see the images, uh, he or she may decide to get some additional x-rays, additional views of the breast. Remember, a mammogram is really an x-ray of, uh, 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 of the breast. So if all the tissues aren't in there, we maybe we'll, we want to see a different angle of that suspicious area. Then we also may want to do some additional imaging. Uh, some we could do right away, like an ultrasound, which is a sound wave we shoot into the breast so we can see if the mass is cystic, meaning fluid filled, or if it's solid. <clears throat> we could do an MRI of the breast. You've heard of MRIs, that's where we take a magnet and we can uh, see inside. And there's also some nuclear studies, <clears throat> excuse me, some studies where we look at the metabolism inside the breast. And if there's a uh, uneven metabolic rate, if there's an area in the breast that has a higher, me has high, uh, a higher metabolic activity, that could be indicative of cancer. Uh, the truth is though that only about 8 to 10 percent of those women that are called back need to undergo a biopsy. And of those that are biopsied, only about 1 in 5 or 20 percent of those <clears throat> turn out to be cancerous. So even if, you're, even if they tell you you need to have a biopsy, 80% of biopsies are benign 
and, and non-cancerous. So we're talking about a very small percentage of the people that get called back that actually have something that even needs further testing. And of those that need further testing, it's a very small percentage that might actually have something that could be harmful to their health. Uh, so I guess the moral of the story is, you know, from somebody who knows a lot of people have been called back, is not to panic. Is that right? When you get this phone call, the first thing is don't automatically assume the worst. Right, exactly. Don't assume the worst. You're very, very correct. Only two to four screening mammograms out of a thousand lead to a cancer diagnosis. But those two to four that we find, we, want, we find them early and we can cure those cancers. So I recommend for my patients and for women that ask me, I recommend they get mammograms every year at age 40. If you're at high risk, meaning that if you have a family history of breast cancer, you may want to uh, uh, start that a little bit earlier. And I generally recommend to women who ask me to start getting their mammogram at age 35, or at least get a baseline at age 35, if you're at high risk. There's a chance to be called back. The reason you're called back is because the physicians are being thorough. And we're doing screening. Screening saves lives. It allows us to, de to detect cancers early before we can palpate them, and hopefully before they spread to lymph nodes. And detecting them early gives us a higher survival rate. If we diagnose breast cancer at stage one, where it's earliest, there's about a 90% five-year survival rate. Which is why, thank you, by the way, for that, uh, which is why it's important today. Uh, we're all wearing pink uh -huh. in honor of Jeannie time. Blaylock and her 20th anniversary for Buddy Check. So this is just, you know, knowledge is power. That's just one of the things that Jeannie's been doing, and you, too, are a champion for awareness, and we appreciate, of course, you thank being you. here, as always, Dr. Ackerman. We thank appreciate you. it. Um, if you have any questions for Dr. Ackerman, oh, by the way, he's going to be back next week. We're going to continue the theme talking about uh, breast cancer. We're going to talk about treatment options for those diagnosed with breast cancer. For questions regarding today's topic or any other health questions that you might have, you can visit firstcoastoncology.com, confidentially submit your questions to ask the doctor. They can be about this or any other topic that you have on your mind, and again, it will be confidential. We'll get